Here's how to calculate the theoretical yield and also the percent yield, given that you're starting with uh, one reactant, which is in limited amount. So here we go. Um, in this example, we're looking at the reaction of zinc with some aqueous silver nitrate solution. This is a single displacement reaction that produces some silver metal and some zinc nitrate. And we're interested in the silver in this case, and you've been asked to calculate how many grams of, of silver can be produced in this reaction. And in this reaction, we were given that uh, we started out with 2 grams of zinc and 2.5 grams of the uh, silver nitrate. And again, we're asked to find the grams of silver. That's also called the... Uh, the theoretical yield of the silver. So the first thing we have to do in this case is because we're given information about both reactants, we need to convert uh, the grams of each of these reactants to moles. And the reason that we're doing that is so that we can tell which one is limited and which one is excess. So the first thing you got to do is calculate the amount of moles of each of the reactants that you actually have and I would highly suggest that you do these out nice and neatly and label uh, this uh, at this point so that you know clearly that that's the amount that you have. Now you're going to choose one of those reactants and convert that to the number of moles of the other reactant that you're going to need to use in the reaction. So I just uh, randomly chose the zinc and set up a mole ratio between the zinc and the silver nitrate which is again the other reactant. Now if you look I've got two numbers representing the moles of silver nitrate. One is the amount that I have and one's the amount that I'm going to need to react with the original two grams of zinc. You want to compare these two numbers and as you look at this you're going to see that you know you need more silver nitrate than you have and therefore you don't have enough and therefore again uh, this would be called the limited reactant. All the calculations we're going to do are always based on the limited reactant because that will con control and dictate the amount of product we're going to get in this case the silver. From there this works out to be just like any other stoichiometric problem. You start with moles of silver nitrate, do a mole to mole ratio between the silver nitrate and the thing you're interested in, which is the silver, and multiply that times the molar mass of the silver, and this gives you uh, 1.59 grams of the silver nitrate that could be produced in theory. Okay, and again, that's in theory. This is the maximum amount of silver that you could obtain and that is called the theoretical yield. So moving on then. Most times when you uh, calculate uh, the theoretical yield uh, and if you were to do an experiment uh, running the same reaction you would typically find that the amount that you get in an experiment is typically lower than the amount that you would expect theoretically. That's because uh, some of those atoms don't actually come together, and so we very rarely find that experiments uh, have what we call a 100% yield. So let's just say that an experiment was conducted, and in this example, we got uh, 1.49 grams of uh, silver. That's, again, called the experimental yield. And we're just kind of making up this number. It's assumed that maybe somebody did an experiment and got that. Then we're going to calculate the percent yield, that's the experimental yield or the actual yield, divided by the theoretical yield times 100 to make it a percent. And that comes out to be 93.9%, which would be a pretty darn good percent yield, and that's a fair amount of silver. All right, so uh, one last uh, problem that could be asked in a, on a, an example like this is uh, how much of the zinc is left over. So uh, let's take a look at that. Remember that the zinc was added uh, in excess and we had limited amounts of silver nitrate. 
So what we're going to do is take the amount of moles of silver nitrate that, uh, that we uh, had here, um, and that was the, the limited amount because, again, that's, that's the one that it controls everything that happens here. And we're going to do a mole ratio between the silver nitrate and the zinc. And uh, finally, if we multiply that number times the molar mass of zinc, this will give us the grams of zinc that are actually used in the experiment. So these are going to go away. They go into forming some zinc uh, nitrate. So now that we have the grams of zinc that are being used, we're going to subtract that from the amount of zinc that we started out with in the very beginning. So if you go back, you might recall that we had 2 grams of zinc at the very beginning. Subtract from that the 0.48 grams of zinc that we used, and the remainder then is going to be equal to the grams of zinc that are left over, or are called in excess. Uh, and as an abbreviation, uh, you might want to use in excess. So this is how you do calculations of percent yield and, uh, and, uh, and also the theoretical yield, given that you have a limited amount of one of the reactants. And uh, this is a very typical type of uh, calculation that you might have to do, not only in chemistry, but if you were to go on and study this at further lengths uh, in college, and certainly at, uh, at the career level, um, something that you're asked to do quite a bit of. So uh, good luck with that, and uh, again, I hope that helps.